Hello UTPA, I'm your host Rose Rodriguez and welcome to another episode of Grad School Now. Before we get started with our feature graduate program, I would like to invite you to our annual graduate fair that will take place on Thursday, March 1st from 5 to 8 p.m. at the newly renovated UTPA Hager Building. At the fair, attendees will get the chance to speak one-on-one -on -one with program directors to learn more about program requirements, application process, and career possibilities. There will also be information sessions on topics such as how to pay for graduate school and conquering the GRE or GMAT exams. Concern about application process? Worry no more. The graduate fair will also have an on-site location where prospective students can start their applications with assistance of the graduate school staff. At UTPA, we have over 60 graduate programs to choose from, but on today's episode, we will take a closer look into the Ethnomusicology program, where our graduate recruiter, Stephanie Ozuna, speaks with assistant professor, Dr. Catherine Raglan. Welcome to another episode of Grad School Now. I'm Stephanie Ozuna, your graduate school recruiter, and on today's episode, we will be featuring an uh, outstanding faculty member from our College of Arts and Humanities, Dr. Katherine Ragland, who is the director of our program for the Ethnomusicology program, who, uh, which falls under the Masters of Music program. Our Masters of Music program contains uh, three different tracks. You can go the performance, pedagogy, or ethnomusicology, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So welcome, Dr. Ragland, into Good our to episode be here. today. Um, can you go ahead and start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background in the ethnomusicology program? Yes, well, actually, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, originally, but I spent the last, uh, I'd say, 10 years or so in New York City and that's actually where I studied ethnomusicology, but I've been kind of doing, working with music for a long time. I was a journalist at the San Antonio Express News, a music journalist at the Seattle Times. I also uh, produced festivals in New York um, and Seattle also, uh, Washington State. So um, I've done a lot of what we call applied ethnomusicology, which is actually the doing, the presenting, the researching, and then uh, in the last 10 years or so, uh, you know, moving into the academic side of things and teaching students the field. That sounds great, yeah. and it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, can you tell some of our viewers who probably have never heard of the ethnomusicology program, what is this? What is it the study of? Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people don't know what it is, but once you figure it out and you see that there's a lot of different possibilities for it, it's, it's really kind of kind of in interesting and exciting. But really it's the study of music and music cultures of the world. So many people in this field are doing research in parts of Africa and you know India, um, you know, South America, and it's been only within the last, I would say, 15 years or so that people started really concentrating, doing more research in the United States. Um, First, looking at the immigration, people coming in from other countries to the U.S. and how they are expressing themselves musically, um, artistically, and then looking at, you know, I was one of the first people to start looking at uh, Texas Mexican music and, and regional American music, that sort of thing. So it's um, really kind of exploring music, the role of music in societies, um, how uh, people communicate, how they how they uh, explore their identity, who they are through music, and the role that music just really plays in so many different levels in our life. Okay, and going along with that mm -hmm. here at UTPA, what type of research is going on? What are some of the students researching? Well, um, the students are, are doing some interesting things. Um, really, uh, the focus in this program is Mexican, Mexican-American, border music. I mean, you can, you can really study any kind of music that you want, and there are students doing that. I think you've interviewed uh, who's uh, doing research on Zumba, which is kind of interesting because you say, well, Zumba, isn't that kind of exercise and mm -hmm. dance? And in, in our field, we also include dance. We include sort of expressive, performative you know, experiences, so music and dance. And she's really looking at how this is a culture itself, how people who really practice this, it's they come together and they create this culture, this community, 
and then also how it becomes localized, how it becomes really expressed here in the, in the valley. So it's a, it's sort of a national, international phenomena, and it it also brings in music from different cultures, particularly Latin America. So it gives these people it gives people this idea, this notion of what Latin America culture and and music is, but yet through this sort of health exercise experience. So she's really exploring all of those mm -hmm. those different avenues. And I think it's actually really kind of cutting edge, in my opinion. I think it's, it's going to be something that people will be really interested in. I know a lot of students who are probably interested in this program probably want to know what type of careers mm -hmm. can they go into when they when they go into this program. Yeah, you know, and I'm kind of an example of what kind of, because I've done a few of them, and I'm not one of these people that, you know, just sort of went to school my life and then and then went into teaching. I I actually came into educate or, or academia later after doing what I mentioned earlier, applied ethnomusicology or applied folklore. But um, so some of the jobs I've had have been as a music journalist, um, uh, writing about music because it because it, our field really entails doing research, going into the communities, talking to people, finding out about uh, different styles of music, learning about the history of music. So we are music historians, but we are also music anthropologists, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, or folklorists. And so I've done, done that kind of work. You can also do work in what I did was in festivals, cultural organizations, work in a cultural organization, helping to put together uh, education programs in museums, which I've done, festivals uh, for the city. I do an accordion festival in San Antonio, the International Accordion Festival, that I direct that. Um, well, I'm not the director, I'm the um, curator, uh, the artistic curator of that. Um, and uh, some people go into the music business. Uh, it's a really good thing. A lot of people have expressed to me, a lot of students have said, I'd like to go into the music business, whether it's management or whether it's working in a record company. Believe it or not, ethnomusicologists do those kinds of jobs because we we know about music, we've researched it, we know about a lot of different genres of music. So if you are interested in that, maybe you'd want to do something in popular music. A lot of students are working in popular music. Yeah, it definitely sounds like there's a variety yeah. of career opportunities yeah. um, if you go into this program. And shifting a little bit over mm -hmm. on how the program is set up here at UTPA, mm -hmm. um, how is it set up? Are there online classes available or mostly in class or how yeah. does that Work. At this time, they're mostly in class. Um, I do teach online. I have taught some online courses for un at the undergrad level, um, and I don't know. It depends on if there is really, you know, more of an interest in that. We could do a combination of those things. But right now, it's it's in class. Um, they're you, you know the graduate. Usually, they're in the evening. Actually, a lot of the courses are in the evening. Uh, that seems to be a lot of our students are working in the school district teaching teaching music and that's it's actually a good combination if you are teaching music and you want to combine a lot of my students have undergrad degrees in music um, and education but you can also have an undergraduate degree in anthropology or something else too seems it like really you can is. get a little bit it's of everything um, yeah. with this program I mean even if you're not a music or a master's of music yeah. major at least you can take these Absolutely. courses and broaden your your range of knowledge um, and you've given us a lot of different information within career possibilities, you know, the program mm -hmm. itself. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview that we have here today? Yeah, I just want to invite everyone um, to come out, and this is a really good way to just sort of figure out or explore uh, what we're doing and, and what this field is about, is actually the uh, Society for Ethnomusicology. And so our conference is uh, here at UTPA, um, it starts um, March 30th and goes until April 1st. One speaker is Jonathan Clark. He's a mariachi historian, and he is coming with, I think it's Miguel Martinez, who is um, a, uh, uh, one of the pioneering members of Mariachi Vargas, which is a very famous mariachi mm -hmm. from Mexico. And he's done, he, he, can, he is the expert on the history not only of that group, but of mariachi music in general, and also talking about the role that mariachi has in the United States, that, you know, how it's really become the symbol of Mexican-American experience here in this country, and how there's all these programs popping up around the country. So he's gonna speak, and that's Friday at five o'clock in the Student Union Theater. So that's, he's kind of, he's kind of like our pre-conference opening. And then our keynote speaker, I'm really excited um, to let you know about him. His name is um, Alejandro Madrid, 
and he is an associate professor at the University of Illinois in Chicago. But um, I think people should come out because he, is, he grew up in Reynosa, right across the border, so he's from this region. But he is one of the foremost scholars in music. Yeah, that sounds like a yeah. great conference. And again, um, if any of you viewers are interested in learning more about this conference that's going on or the ethnomusicology program itself, um, please visit their website. It's online. It's, it's available through. Um, it are, it's linked from our grad school website into the ethnomusicology program. So please visit our website so you can get more information on that. Um, again, thank you so much thank for being you. here today. And again, if you have any questions or want to uh, know the program requirements for the ethnomusicology program, please visit our website at www.utpa.edu forward slash grad school. Um, on that link, you'll click on the Masters of Music, uh, select um, ethnomusicology, and you'll see the program requirements for that specific program. Again, thank you for um, being with us on another episode of Grad School Now. And now I'll hand it back to Rose, where she'll be talking more with our featured student. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. The ethnomusicology program sounds very interesting. Now for some quick announcements. Remember, future grad students will be having the graduate fair on March 1st from 5 to 8 p.m. at the UTPA Hager Building, which is located on the corner of Highway 281 and Freddy Gonzalez. The Graduate Resource Center will also be hosting a few upcoming workshops, which include dissecting the process of thesis and dissertation on February 23rd from 6 to 7 p.m. at the University Ballroom and refining your presentational skills on March 29th from 6 to 7 p.m. at the University Ballroom. And now on to our feature student, Cora Durain, who is currently in the Ethnomusicology program. My name is Cora Durain. I'm originally from Houston, and I moved down to the Valley to study Ethnomusicology here at Pan Am. And so I work actually as an elementary music teacher in Harlingen and I go to school here to study for my master's. Well, my main interest was in the border region, and when I found out that I could actually study world music and the border region at the same time through ethnomusicology, I was very, very excited to come down here. And then I also heard about uh, Dr. Raglan, a wonderful professor that came here at the same time to start the ethnomusicology program. It's been great. It's given me a lot of opportunities to decide what my own research interests are exactly, more specifically in, the, in this region, looking at popular culture. Uh, looking at hip-hop, looking at even Zumba as its own culture. So a lot of interesting research going on. Well, I had a great undergrad experience at Howard Payne studying music education. And um, I just wanted to continue to look at different cultures and how music affects people around the world and also here, people that have moved from other places to this area. Well, as I'm looking at Zumba, I'm asking a lot of questions about why is it popular in this region? What is the meaning that the music and the dance moves carry for people here? Why is it such a big uh, phenomenon? and uh, just interviewing people, asking them how Zumba's made a difference in their life. It's been a lot of fun. Well, if you have a lot of questions and things that you want to continue to look into to kind of specialize within your area, it's a great way to also build bridges to other cultures and, and people that have different perspectives. For example, when I did a project on hip-hop, I had the opportunity to go and interview break dancers, people that are part of the underground hip-hop culture that I had no idea even existed. Don't forget to mark your calendar for this year's graduate fair on March 1st from 5 to 8 p.m. at the UTPA Hager Building located on 1407 East Freddy's Gonzalez. This concludes another episode of Grad School Now. 
For further information, visit www.utpa.edu forward slash grad school, Facebook, and YouTube. I am Rose Rodriguez, and thank you for watching.